Jeff Collins was fired very recently as the head coach at Georgia Tech. A lot of you saw this coming. A lot of us thought this was inevitable. It eventually happened. So that's the third job now to come available in the very young college football season. You got Nebraska being open. You have Arizona State open. And now Georgia Tech. You would assume that Auburn is one of those programs that will likely have a vacancy at the head coaching spot as well soon. So like I said, Deion Sanders is a name that is consistently thrown around when it comes to these conversations. And Deion Sanders is a pulverizing figure, just given the fact that his name's Deion Sanders. He was a baller in the league. He also played Major League Baseball, was now the head coach of Jackson State. And a lot of people are now wondering, should Deion Sanders get a Power 5 head coaching job? From what I understand, his name has been rumored in different circles in years past. Is this the year where he finally gets it? We're going to break down some pros and some cons and ultimately give you how I think it would end up shaking out if you do hire him. So first, the obvious is if you hire Deion Sanders as your head coach, brings a whole lot of buzz to your program. Just the name, Deion, the, the, the brand even more so that Deion Sanders is creates so much excitement around a program. I think he would be a really good fit from a buzz perspective at Georgia Tech. And people have said this before. I'm going to say it again. His brand, especially in the city of Atlanta, cannot be overstated. So with him being at the helm at Georgia Tech, I think the recruiting would ultimately reach a whole new level. Now, how does that stack up to the rest of the conference? I think it probably takes some time, but you would also imagine in the transfer portal day and age that some of that top talent from Jackson State that he's been able to get there would likely you would assume, follow him to wherever he goes next. If it's Georgia Tech, I think you probably grab a larger percentage of those players. Just by nature of the location, Jackson State isn't that far from Georgia Tech. All that sort of fits in well, in my opinion. The second piece of this is, well, he doesn't have a ton of experience. A lot of you know how this works when it comes to the coaching ladder and how you climb that. Usually you start out as a GA, if not a volunteer, and then from a GA you get to being a position coach, from position coach, maybe a coordinator, and then if the things fall in line how you would like them to, you eventually get to have that head coaching position. Deion Sanders coached at the high school level and then parlayed that into now being the head coach at Jackson State. So he hasn't necessarily cut his teeth the same way. Nothing wrong with that, but I think it's fair to have a little bit of pause before handing him the keys to a Power 5 program. Because Deion Sanders is 19-5 and as a head coach. I'm not talking about the win percentage. That's great. But to have only been a head coach for 24 games and have no other college coaching experience outside of that, there might be some other conversations we got to have during this interview process before we hire Deion Sanders. So, with that being said... The head coaches, depending on the program, typically manage culture. You're more so a CEO than you are in the weeds as a coach. So I think this whole Deion Sanders to a Power 5 job could work if it were the right program, but I think there's a certain way you go about it. And that is similar to a model I like to compare to the phenomenal movie with Will Ferrell, Mike Ditka, Kicking and Screaming. In that movie, Will Ferrell takes over the head coach of a youth soccer team, realizes he's not so much hands-on with the soccer, hires a great coach that is more hands-on in Mike Ditka. This is not to knock Deion Sanders as a coach. I just think you could probably make up for some of the things that he may lack from an experience standpoint by hiring him, whoever that Mike Ditka equivalent would be. And I think Deion Sanders would attract some of those great coaches. I'm just saying, if you hire Deion Sanders as head coach, you have to make sure that that staff underneath him is ready to roll. Because if it's just Deion Sanders and the rest of the staff is sort of up in the air, I like this fit a whole lot less. Now, of the three jobs that are open right now, Nebraska, Arizona State, and Georgia Tech, again, I think Georgia Tech is by far and away the fit that makes the most sense. You could talk about Auburn a little bit if you want to, I have a little bit of pause throwing Deion Sanders into the SEC given the very, very small sample size we have for him as a head coach. So could it work? Absolutely. Are there appealing things about it? 100%. The buzz around the program, the recruiting he would probably bring you are very, very 
encouraging things and appealing things to make him your head coach. But the lack of experience is something that you would sort of have to have a trade-off with. Bottom line, I believe he will get a Power 5 job, whether it's this year or in years to come. Sounds like and feels like that's his goal to eventually get to the Power 5 level. I think it's a matter of time. But again, if it's going to be one of these three jobs that are open right now, you want to go ahead and throw the Auburn job in there and call it four jobs open right now, be my guess. But I think Georgia Tech is probably the spot that he would land at. But Deion Sanders, a name that we now are going to and have to talk about when it comes to the college football coaching carousel. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.